Good morning and welcome to Hope Vineyard Church. We're glad that you're here. If you're online, say hello, check in, let us know uh, that, you, that how you're doing today and, um, and just say hi to other people. Feel free to join in the fun. So we'll see you in about three minutes here. Take care. Well, good morning and welcome to Hope Vineyard Church. So glad to have you all here online, in person. Uh, we are happy to be celebrating Jesus today. My name is Jim. Uh, if you're just joining us for the first time, my wife, Dee Dee, and I are the pastors here at Hope Vineyard Church in Paxton, and, uh, and uh, we're glad that you're with us. Say hello in the comments if you're in person or if you're online. That's a great way where we can connect with other people who are um, part of our church community and so say hello uh, if you have any prayer needs or anything that you want to share things that God's doing in your life uh, then go ahead and do that in the comments below um, and be sure to like us here on Facebook we also have an Instagram page and a YouTube channel so like subscribe uh, do all those things to make sure that you're following us and staying up to date because these are the best places for us to be connecting um, I want to let you know in just a couple weeks it's going to be Easter weekend uh, and on Easter Sunday our plan and our prayer is to have great weather because we're going to be outside at Pelz Park here in Paxton. We'll still be online so if you if you're worshiping online you won't miss out on that but uh, we'll be at Pelz Park at 10 a.m. and like I said praying for great weather on April 4th that's Easter Sunday 
uh, it, it should be a good time. That way we can be a little spaced out, we can be outside um, and, and just worship and celebrate Easter in a way where we don't have to worry so much about how the, pace, the place may get overcrowded or that kind of thing. So uh, put that on your calendar and be sure to join us on Easter Sunday, April 4th out at Pells Park. And in the meantime, be praying for great weather. I'm going to turn things over to Dee Dee. She's continuing our series, this Lenten journey that we have, we call Journey with Jesus. So here she is. Turn things over to her now. Good morning. How is everybody this morning? Just enjoying the, it looks like it might get warm again this week, so I'm looking forward to that. Um, this morning we are continuing this journey with Jesus, and we're getting closer to, you know, the Jesus' death and his resurrection. And one of the main things that all the gospel writers has um, tried to show is that Jesus went to his death willingly. And this was important because the readers of the, that these letters were written to and the, um, that the gospels were written to were at the time of the writing, they were facing persecution. They were being, they were starting to get kicked out of the synagogues. And, um, and so they were starting, whereas they were, you know, could be um, happily under the Jewish community for a long time. Now, um, in the beginning of the second century, they weren't um, always welcomed in the synagogues anymore and they were starting to um, face persecution and they were starting to feel frustrated and it was really kind of um, confusing to them and so often when we when you know the letters that we have of the epistles and the gospels that we have are written to help believers re, um, be certain of their faith because you know, it, they're, they're still believers of a, of a leader who died. And so these letters are written specifically to help us believe that this wasn't a mistake and that, you know, that, that even though they were f um, facing persecution, that they really were following the, um, Jesus who really was the Son of God. And in John's letter, we're, or, um, in his gospel, he's writing and he's offering this um, opportunity for those who, who understand the gospel to become um, children of light like Jesus. And that, that they have the, not only the opportunity to believe the right thing, but their whole identity is transformed to be um, God's children. And so we are, um, today our main scripture reading is from the book of John. But before we get there, I want to talk a little bit about hero stories. And we talk about that, different aspects of hero stories um, off and on as I give messages because I really like the hero story. But there's a portion of the hero story that happens in some hero stories that I, you know, sometimes could do without. And that's the, the, um, when the motif of sacrifice is offered in the hero story, you know, uh, most some of um, the more recent sacrifices of some of our heroes and hero stories is when um, at the end of uh, Luke, the last Jedi. So if I'm going to give a spoiler, so if you have not seen it, then but Luke, go ahead, Luke ends up sacrificing himself. And at the end of, Ir of um, Avengers, it was the end game, Iron Man ends up sacrificing himself. We know in the final season of um, one of the Star Treks that Captain Picard ends up sacrificing himself. I mean, these are, you know, loved um, heroes. And even in the comic book series um, with, that had Supergirl, Supergirl ends up sacrificing herself for Superman, in fact. And so that that kind of is one of those, like we like to hear see it in a superhero message. It's kind of like, oh, isn't that nice? And we see it in our Jesus stories, but then we're also asked that of ourselves. And that's actually what we're going to talk about today. 
Um, Jesus, in the scripture from John that we're reading today, shows how his sacrifices is his sacrifice is actually the plan for his exaltation, and yet at, he's offering that to us too. It's, he, um, we are referred to Christians, his, those who follow Jesus, are referred to in this as the the children of light, and to. And Jesus says here that the children of light are to follow him in laying down his, their lives on behalf of the world. Let's pray. Father, I know that there's a lot in this message this morning, and yet I, I want to ask that you would just open up our hearts to hear the parts that you are simply and gently saying to us. And I ask that you will... Um, just embrace your children because we here today are your children of light and I ask that you could continue to teach us um, your ways as we look at Jesus our brother the first fruits of um of being your child in Jesus name we pray amen so this morning our main scripture is from John 12 and we're reading um from John 12 20 to 35 It says, now there were some Greeks, and they were, here they're kind of in the temple um, in Jerusalem. And this is right toward the end of, of Jesus' story. It says, now there are some Greeks among those who went up to worship at the festival. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, with a request. Sir, they said, we would like to see Jesus. Philip went to tell Andrew. Andrew and Philip, in turn, told Jesus. Jesus replied, the hour has not yet come for the Son of Man, the hour has, sorry, this time he says, the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly, I tell you, unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. So we have this reference to, um, in these first couple verses to the Greeks. And some scholars think that Jesus actually talked to the Greeks and some say he didn't, but what what is the reason that they're referenced is because the God's plan was to reconcile the whole world to himself and once you know at the beginning the whole world was kind of reconciled or at least he had he, the beginning of the plan started in in the garden of eden and then um after the the garden of eden there was corruption and the whole bunch of Folk tried to build an, a tower, and they were, you know, there's, they began to, to not rely, not be, not have interaction with God, and so God basically banished all the nations of the world and put like other spiritual beings, kind of in charge of those different nations, yet who were lesser, and He was still overall in charge of everything, but they didn't have relation. He didn't have a special relationship with humanity anymore, and so He then out of those nations the Israelites and began to have a special relationship with Israel and Israel was then commissioned to share the this special relationship with the whole rest of the world and so God's whole plan was always to reconcile um, to with the whole world and yet um, so so Jesus' ministry was primarily to the Jews, but every once in a while, they'll, there's like little tidbits of, of where it's revealed that he's also um, ministering or having influence of the Gentile nations. And this was tr to give us a clue. And then Jesus basically says, now my time has come. And here in the story line of John, Jesus is it, it's showing that um, that Jesus knows that he's going to die. And this is happening. We don't, we haven't read through like verse by verse, the whole of, of John or any of our gospels this year. Um, but the whole tension of, of, um, Jesus's conflict with the world and, um, the, John and some of the other gospel writers use the conflict and they, a lot of times when it says to, the, um, the Jews, the, probably during Jesus's uh, ministry, there wasn't as huge of a conflict with all the Jews, but they're using a type of literary device called 
the trial scene, and they're setting up this trial motif um, to show how how the world is judging Jesus and, and everything that happens in one way based on th their interpretation of the, of the law, but um, John, and he's letting the readers into the gospel, is also showing the how God is judging the world. And so you have these two stories kind of in intermingled through the gospel of John and and Jesus kept on saying it's not time yet it's not time yet and he was basically s in in so that would allude to the fact that uh, not enough evidence from the world's point of view had come against Jesus in order for him to be condemned yet and yet we'll, as we continue to um, read we're going to see the evidence that's stacking against the world that comes to conclusion today in our reading and yet and so Jesus is also saying that he has to die and in, and they're giving that um, the symbolism of the seed when it, and they believed like um, at that time in science they believed that the whole plant was um, contained in the seed and so it would die and then it would grow again and they believed that um, regarding human seed as well and so they have this this image that they're, he's giving and he's saying it's not just going to be w you know one plant that's growing it's like when you have a whole ear of corn or a whole bunch of, of wheat the seed dies and it grows a whole bunch of of um fruit so now we go on and we see in um in verse 25 anyone who loves their life will lose it while anyone who hates their life in this world will keep it for eternal life Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, my servant also will be. My father will honor the one who serves me. And so he's showing the life in the world. He's contrasting the life in the world with the life of eternal life. And so he's saying that if you follow me, you're losing your life here. You're losing your worldly life, but you're living better because you have your, this eternal life, this different perspective. We'll, we'll talk a little bit more when it talks about being in the world, but not of the world. When we follow Jesus, we stop being of the world. We begin to be of Jesus, of, of the children of light. And we see that those who are living and following Jesus will be doing what the Father is doing, and the Father is doing what Jesus is doing. Jesus goes on to say, now my, my soul is troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it was for this very reason that I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. So not only is this verse showing the humanity of Jesus, it's also showing how Jesus is identifying with humanity and the, and the readers that John is writing to, and even those of us who struggle sometime in our efforts to follow Jesus. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it and will glorify it again, talking about God's name. The crowd that was there and heard it um, said it had thundered, and others said an angel had spoken to him. And this is a direct reference to when God spoke on the Mount Sinai in the form of thunder. So it's again saying, this is God. This is God's plan. God is affirming this. This is, this is not, you know, like if you're looking from God's perspective, nothing's catching um, God by surprise. The world might be going against Jesus, but God has a plan. Jesus said, this voice was for your benefit, not mine. Now is the time for judgment on the world. Now the prince of this world will be driven out. And I, when I'm lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to show the kind of death he was going to die. Now, again, we see that this is talking about Jesus' mission to the world. And it's also his mission to drive out the ruler of the world. Because remember, we've said time and again that the enemy and evil powers had corrupted the world. And there was authority, there was evil authority over the world that Jesus, by his death, 
was going to conquer and his resurrection was going to allow us to conquer. So this is actually the gavel scene in the in God's judgment over the world. So the whole of the book of John was leading to this place where it says, you know, that that part of the story like like the perspective of the world and the and the Jewish rulers in this um in the book of John was to condemn Jesus and yet the gavel comes down and says this is the time where the prince of this world is going to be condemned and driven out. The crowd spoke up. We have heard from the law that, that the Messiah will remain forever. So how can you say the Son of Man must be lifted up? Who is the Son of Man? But this language, that idea of being lifted up, is actually taken from other Old Testament language and from other language throughout the book, throughout the Bible. When we look at the story of, of when um, the Israelites got sick when they were in the desert and Moses was told to put, make a, a, a pole and stick it in the ground and then wrap a snake around it and everybody who was looked at the snake was healed. So we have that lifted up um, image in our mind when we read that and there's healing that comes from Christ being exalted and lifted up we see um, the there's another trial scene that actually the book of John is modeled after in um, Isaiah and in Isaiah um, 52 13 it says see my servant will act wisely he will be raised and lifted up and highly exalted just as there were many who were appalled at him, his appearance was so disfigured beyond that of any human being and his form marred beyond human likeness. So he will sprinkle many nations and kings will, be shut, and kings will shut their mouths because of him. For what they were not told, they will see. And what they have not heard, they will understand. We also know that um, Jesus, John calls Jesus in when he talks about John the Baptist in um, the book of John, that John the Baptist says, behold, see the Lamb of the world who will take away, see the Lamb of God who will take away the sins of the world. And so these three images of the Passover lamb and the, and the um, snake on the pole in the desert and the suffering servant from the book of Isaiah are all in the reader's mind as Jesus himself says, when I am lifted up and so they think so so the being lifted up we'll see later is the judgment of the world that Jesus would have to go to the cross but the in the twist in in the way that John's reading it he's not looking at being lifted up as the punishment but it's actually the victory And then it says the next day, oops, that's not what it says, but maybe, hold on, now I'm lost. And then in verse 35, it says, Jesus told them, you are going to have the light just a little while longer. Walk while you are, you have the light before darkness overtakes you. Whoever walks in the dark does not know where they are going. Believe in the light while you have the light, so that you may become children of light. When he had finished speaking, Jesus left and hid himself from them. And so Jesus is encouraging all who were listening, you know, this, this is it. I'm the light. Walk in the light. Become children of light. In um, the uh, other, other Bible writers refer to God about or to refer to humans as being um, children of light in Romans. Oops, maybe I don't have it. In in Ephesians five eight and nine, it says, "For once you were in darkness, but now you are light in the Lord." Walk as children of light, and the fruit of light is found in all that is good and right and true. And so we see that 
those who are following Jesus, and John is basically saying, you know, it might feel bad that you've been kicked out of the synagogues, but we have a different perspective than they have. They haven't seen the light. They haven't seen Jesus, but we are following Jesus because we have a different perspective, and from our perspective, God has won, and we have won because we, are, we see it, and they don't see it. And so this morning, I want to take, I want to look back at a little bit of this scripture that we saw today. Because if we believe that we're children of light and we're following Jesus and we're walking as children of light, then we need to follow Jesus as children of light. And in verse 25 and 26, he says, anyone who loves their life will lose it. But anyone who hates their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, my servant will also be. My father will honor the one who serves me. So this, this journey of Jesus to the cross, in this, we, have a, we have an opportunity to take on Jesus' perspective. It was Jesus' identity with the whole world that allowed him to defeat the prince of the world. You know, it... And so it wasn't just Jesus saying, I'm a really good person and I'm going to win. Like, I'm, I'm a good Christian. I haven't done anything bad. It was his identity um, with the whole world. Now, Jesus did lay down his life for his friends, and that was very honorable in Greek culture and, and um, those, who Jesus was, those who the book of John were, was um, written to. And he did lay down his life for the nation. He laid down his life for the nation of Israel because he was the he became the representative of national nation of Israel who would fulfill the commission of Israel to reveal Jesus to the or to reveal Jesus and God to the to the world. And he laid down his life for the whole world. And so he identified with the suffering and the struggle of all of humanity. And he laid down his life. And so if we take on Jesus' perspective of not just I'm a really good person, which is, is very tempting in, um, in evangelicalism. I mean, we have like, a, I, was, we didn't, I didn't grow up even with, with saved language. I grew up um, with language of like if you believed in Jesus, then you would have a personal relationship with Jesus. And so, and that's not bad. Basically, you know, but in some ways, if you don't understand this whole world um, view, you have just like me and Jesus are good. We're good. We're okay. Um, I don't really have to worry about, you know, what, what you're doing. You know, I'll mind my business. You mind your business. But me and Jesus, we're good. And yet that's not what Jesus was doing. He wasn't like, well, me and the Father, we're good. I'm going to get it on the cross. I'll go up to heaven. I'll be resurrected. And I'm good. No. He's like, I'm, I don't want this. You know, he's, he, he knew he was going to be lifted up and God was going to be exalted. And he's like, oh, this, this is terrible. I don't want to do this, Lord, but I will. And, and it wasn't because he had any problem with his relationship with the Father. It was because he was doing this for the whole world. Because he saw the, the brokenness of the whole world. Now, if we look at this in systems thinking, we're looking at the whole world system. So the whole world system is, is um, corrupt. So we could say there's systemic corruption, right? And within the systemic corruption, there's systemic um, sexism and racism and xenophobia, which is like people think they're, they're one religion's better than the other religion and they're they want to kill about it, um, and or or just be rude to people about it, um, and and there's there's all the, there's ableism like my, I'm I'm healthy and you're not healthy and so I'm better than you or things should be worked around me, um, and not you. There's there's people there's a view of um, what is it meritism? Meritism is when you think that everybody. Um, it gets ahead based on their own merit, and there's no, you know, everything would be equal, but there's, you know, it's your own merit, and um, and that basically serves those who are ahead and doesn't serve anybody who's who's a love, um, who, you know, has very is very meritous but just doesn't get ahead. There's these isms that are in our world; they're worked within our world, the whole world system, in order to create. 
um, disunity amongst humanity. And they want disunity amongst humanity because if, if we saw each other as children of light, as if we, if we saw each other as image bearers, we wouldn't defile each other. We wouldn't abuse each other. We wouldn't um, harm each other. We wouldn't step on someone's head in order to get a, a, above someone else. And so we have this whole corrupt world system that Jesus comes and he, he, def he puts his gavel down and he says, today I'm judging the prince of the world. And so as children of light, we, need, we are lifted out of the world system and we, and to, in order to see the world system. If we, if we step back and we see that this, what's going on in the world is wrong, then we can participate in solving those problems. But if we, if we stay within the world and someone says, well, what's going on in the world is wrong, then we're like, oh, that hurts. It hurts my feelings that you said that. And, we don't, we, and, and, then, and, then, and then the enemy can, can gaslight us. The enemy, when, when we remain in the world or when, we're, when we are listening to the world, the enemy can gaslight us and saying, well, evil doesn't exist, you know, and it uses our own religion against us because it says, well, you've got a personal relationship with Jesus. You're good. You're good. As long as you're nice, you know, as long as you're, you smiled at that person, evil doesn't exist. Um, it says that, you know, you can remain neutral. Just remain neutral. You know, don't, don't, be, don't. Rock the boat, but the ha problem is there's only two sides. There's the side of, of the enemy who's perpetuating evil, and there's the side of Jesus who, as children of light, we are to join, who is, who is defeating evil. And remaining evil allows evil, or remaining neutral allows evil to keep going. It says that a person can only be all evil or all good. And so then if, if you think, well, it, that, then if you identify with any of the isms, then you can think, well, if, if, I'm, if I'm a little bit sexist or if I'm a little bit ableist or if I'm a little bit racist, then I must be bad. But I'm not bad. I'm good. I got a relationship with Jesus. We're good. And so I can't be racist or sexist or homophobic or xenophobic. No. People, we're in the, we're, we're, our corruption comes from the, the evil that has corrupted everything. But we can weed that out of us. We don't have to be ashamed and, and, and you know, like, so I'm so disappointed that I, you know, don't have a disability because, you know, like now, I have, now I'm guilty for that. No. But we can use our power for good. You know, if I was born white and I know that other people are oppressed under systemic because it's the whole world is a system. So the, the whole system is broken. And if I see that, that there has been groups of people for various reasons that have been oppressed, I don't have to think I'm a bad person. I'm guilty for being white. I can think I can choose to use my power to defeat evil or I can stand and watch it happen. The enemy wants to gaslight us and say that we are guiltless and that we are powerless and that we shouldn't do anything. And that if someone points it out, they're picking on me. And if I feel picked on, then I can be mad at the people who are pointing it out. But that's not what God is doing. Jesus is saying, I love you. I love you so much. I want you to join me in bringing good to the world. And if my bringing good to the world means I don't have racist books anymore, good. You know, it's, it's, it's a good thing. We are empowered to do good. We are empowered to love big. We are empowered to lay down our lives and our stuff and our perceived freedoms on behalf of another because our God is the king of the universe. We know who we are. And so we can, we can do the laying down bit not because someone's attacking us, but because 
God's name is being exalted when we do it. The enemy wants to gaslight us and say, none of that's true. But we have the higher perspective. We have God's vision of the world. We have the vision of Jesus who died for the world because he wants to defeat the prince of this world. And he already has. And when we believe that in us, we have more power than the evilest evil. And we are sitting at the right hand of God the Father with Jesus judging evil. So today, we can embrace that. We have an opportunity to say, yes, I want to be a child of light. Yes, I already am. And I'm going to let my life live that out even more. We can change our attitudes. We can, we can think, if I'm being called out, if I start twinging a little bit when someone says something, I at least have to say, Jesus, is this true? What part of this is true in me? It doesn't mean I'm all bad. But if, if I'm participating in something that evil participates in, then that part of me that participates in it or thinks it's okay or thinks it's not hurting anybody because it's not hurting me, even if someone else is saying, ouch, that hurts, then we can, we can say, oh, no, I'm going to be, I'm going to, I'm going to step on evil. I'm going to hurt that. We need to be able to speak up. We can't put up. We need to be able to point out, and we need to be able to change our hearts and be willing to change our hearts. And it's an ongoing process. And, you know, even those of us who are, like, who have championed the anti-everything, we, like, we, are, I, we champion, Jim and I champion anti-racism. And yet it's, it's going to take eternity before it's all weeded out. I, we champion anti-sexism. It's going to take eternity before it's all weeded out. You know, I, I champion love for humanity, and yet as soon as someone clicks a pen or breathes too loud, I'm right there hating humanity, all humanity. It doesn't matter if they are women or men or what religion they are. If they are breathing too loud in my ear, then I have a lot of Jesus to, to you know, there's room for Jesus to do work in my life. We don't need to be ashamed when evil is pointed out because we are children of God. And so if, if we are children of God, have evil in us to get rid of, it doesn't make us evil, but it makes the evil in us evil, and we need to get rid of it. And when we speak up and when we point that out, because this is the world system that we're in and because we're still living in a world system, that's when we'll have struggles. Christians are not... Um, oppressed when they act like jerks and people call them out on it but when christians actually champion justice when they actually champion love and humanity and and doing um, good to others it gets it gets prickly because the world is trying to make people feel ashamed and powerless and and that's not what we're doing at all when we're, when we're trying to champion justice, we're trying to say, you have the power of the king of the universe. Use it. But it gets prickly. I mean, people, people have left this church when the first time Jim talked about social justice, bam. No, I don't want to hear about social justice in church. You know, Jesus is about justice. We're going to keep on talking about this stuff in church because we're not picking on you. We're not picking on you. This is an invitation for love and to use our power for good. Romans 12, 2 says, don't be, don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may prove what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect. When Jesus prayed about his leaving his disciples, he said, I give them your word and the world has hated them because they are not of the of the world even as i am not of the world i do not ask you to take them out of the world but keep them from the evil one they are not of the world even as i am not of the world so we are not of the world we are children of light and this today is an invitation to rock it 
to rock it. Rock being children of light. Let's live as children of light. And let's follow Jesus. And let's go where he is. And let's lay down our lives and our, our wants and our desires and our privileges and the, th and the things that make us the most comfortable. And be ready to do that because that's where Jesus is. Father, thank you. Thank you for meeting us here today. Thank you for giving us your word, giving us your example, and giving us your spirit that lives inside us, that takes us out of this world, but makes us of your world, that we can, um, that we can put that gavel down and say no to the lies of the enemy and yes to the love of God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I want to say thank you for all of you who continue to contribute and give to Hope Vineyard Church. Um, you can do that online and through the mail. Uh, if you're in person, if you choose, we have a box on the way out too. So um, it's, it's just a way for us to continue to do the works of Jesus in our community. So thank you for being generous and faithful and sacrificial in your giving. Um, and in, in thinking of... Uh, giving, let us give thanks to God by praying the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray together. Let's pray this out loud. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, yours is the power, Yours is the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. I want to encourage you to uh, join with us in singing or soak and meditate in the words, uh, the, the songs we sing. They're really prayers that are set to music. And so we're praying to God uh, in giving him thanks and giving him praise. Um, the words will be on the screen behind me. So um, feel free to um, just sing. Set us free. You have taken all our sins away. You have risen and you won the day. God, you have broken every bond and chain in your love. God, you are breaking through the night, breaking into lives and healing not. Your love is torn the veil. Your love will never fail. Your love is God, you always break through 
storm surrounding me, let it break, let your name still, call the sea to still, the rage in me to still, every wave, let your name, Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness tremble. Silence, fear, Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness tremble, Jesus, Jesus. Call these bones to live, call these lungs to sing once again. these lungs to sing once again I will pray Jesus Jesus you make the darkness tremble Jesus Jesus you silence me Jesus Jesus you make the darkness tremble Jesus, we thank you that you, that that gavel came down and you have judged the world and the prince of this world 
but you have brought us to your Father. Lord, thank you for removing us enough that we can be um, in this world, but not of this world. And help us to live like you. Lord, help us to, to know you more and more, to see you, to see your sacrifice, and to see how you are inviting us to participate in bringing good to the world, not just to the, 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 the one level, not just make myself really good, not just make my family really good, but Lord, as we, as we extend and as we keep on making our hearts bigger and bigger and bigger, Lord, thank you that you are so big and that your love takes care of us and that um, we can trust you as we step out and we take risks in love. Lord, I ask that your spirit would minister your love. Just keep on loving us even as we end this today and that you can show us how to walk this walk and how to be where the Father is. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for coming this morning. Thank you for joining us online. Um, well, if you have anything that you want us to put on the caring prayer list, message us, let us know. We'll keep praying. Um, and thank you for just being part of this family, that we can be children of God, children of light together. We'll see you next week. Have a great week.